This time we're in the magical city of Aburobello, best known for the typical whitewashed stone huts with conical roofs called Trulli. Let's find out more about this fascinating place. It's pretty compact and best visited by car. The city is about 55 minutes drive from Bari. You can also take the train from Bari Central to Alberobello in under two hours. You can check the train times and ticket prices at this website. There is plenty of places to park around the city centre and we paid six euros to park for a day, not that we needed all that time. Whilst you can see a Trullo house, Trulli being the plural, all over the Puglia region, Alberobello Bello has the largest concentration with around 1,000 Trullis. Most of them have been restored and are being used as restaurants, souvenir shops and to offer unique accommodation for tourists who are looking for an authentic experience. Although I would argue that this area is so touristy, you're better off looking for a Trullo outside of the city like we did and you can see our experiences staying in a Trullo overnight in our next video. So we're here in the middle of August and I don't think uh, we could have picked a busier time to come. Obviously the Italians are on holiday this month and so it makes it a very busy period. Everybody is out viewing the tourist attractions and of course this is probably one of the most popular places to visit and so everybody is here today. But we'll work our way around and see how we get on. The most touristy part of Alberobello Bello is the Rio Monte, a district on a hill facing the modern town centre. There are several narrow lanes sloping upwards with others winding across the hillside. This is where most people come to take their Instagram photos and it's very pretty. It's also where you'll find most of the shops and bars. Vendors welcome you in to view their local ceramics, trinkets and jewellery. And in the tiny bars you can sample local wines and liqueurs. Dry stone mortarless dwellings have been around for thousands of years. You may recall the beehive huts being very similar in our Dingle Peninsula Island video. They started to appear in Alberobello in around the 15th century. They are made of limestone blocks found in the region and they were really designed to dodge taxes from the local authorities. Should someone come along and try and impose a tax, they would just knock down the trullo and then rebuild it somewhere else. So all the different tree buildings have a different top to them and that denotes who actually made them. And on some of them you'll see like a weird kind of pattern on the side, like sometimes a cross, sometimes an animal or whatever. And they were there, uh, put there to protect the inhabitants of the trilly. So Alba Bello is a World Heritage Site and uh, you know it's so busy today we're actually not really enjoying walking around because there's just so many people you really can't get a good look at the place so we may have to come back say in the evening or something and hope it's a bit quieter but as I said before we are right here in the Italian holiday season in August and so Bound I think to be busy. it's gonna, just going to be busy all the time isn't it which is a bit of a shame so you may want to pick another time to come because it is so busy today it's incredible but we'll keep trying to show you what we can but there's just hundreds of people everywhere.
there seems to be two kind of tritty parts. There's one on one side of the road and one on the other. We're on the side which seems a little bit less crowded and touristy and it seems to be more kind of holiday rentals so you can rent and stay in a trilly um, this side and then the other side's more kind of shops, restaurants, a couple of bars um, but this side's nice and you can walk around freely all the streets taking your pics and uh, yeah it's just a lot quieter. Next to the church is Belvedere St Lucia. This is a great viewing platform giving you superb shots of the rooftops on the Rioni Monti side of town. So don't miss this, we'll put a link in our description for you along with other places that we've mentioned. Around the main tourist area there are several restaurants and pizzerias some in Trillies and at least one with an outside terrace. On Thursdays there's a great fruit and veg market and you can buy loads of local produce like watermelons or a punnet of cherries. We had intended to head back one evening, as we were told it's magical with the lighting and vibe, but other exciting things on our Puglia tour kept us occupied. The best way to experience Trulli is to stay in one, and next time we'll do just that. Join us for a magical experience, something you should definitely try and do on your trip. Remember to subscribe so you don't miss anything and we'll see you on the next video. Happy travels from the Memory Seekers.